Aloha, everybody. Hope you had a good asynchronous Wednesday. Hopefully you didn't miss us as much as we missed you, right? Because that would mean you were suffering. You were crying all day like us teachers were. Anyway, uh, here's the deal. Uh, go ahead and press pause. Copy down that warm up and uh, I'm gonna tuck this up a tiny bit. And then you can copy down everything but a word problem we're going to do at the end. Okay. All right. Press pause. And hopefully you were able to read my writing down there at the bottom. It says use the generic rectangle and the C method to multiply three and a half times four and two thirds. Okay. So you know what the generic rectangle is. I want to remind you what the C method is. That's when you take uh, your pencil or pen and you start at the bottom of the fraction of the mixed number and make a C. And what you're doing is you're going to multiply the denominator times the whole number plus the numerator. Because remember, we're, th that three, I want to find out how many halves this is. Each of those three, one, two, three, has two halves. So I'm multiplying two times three. That gives me six halves plus the, the last one makes it seven halves. So three and a half is the same as seven halves. How many thirds is in four whole pizzas? Right? Well, that's each of those four holes is three thirds. So four times three is 12 plus the two more, 14 thirds. Okay. So you're going to multiply that, but you're also going to use the C method, or not the C method, the generic rectangle there. Okay. Now I want you to copy down this word problem and start thinking about it. Okay. What it says is at the same time of day, an eight foot pole casts a shadow that's six feet, a six foot shadow. Okay. And there's a tree that has a 24 foot shadow. How tall is the tree? Well, whenever I can't figure something out, it always helps to draw a picture. Okay, so this is an eight-foot pole. Good picture, huh? Mr. Daniel, you're an artist, right? And here's my tree. Right? Wow, you really are an artist, Mr. Daniel, right? And I don't know how tall this is. That's what we're trying to figure out. Okay. But I know that the shadow of the tree is 24 feet. And I know the shadow of the pole is 6 feet. Okay. Now, I want you to know that since the sun is 93 million miles away, the angles from here to here and here to here are the same. And if the angles are the same, and when we measure something, we go straight up and down, okay, you can say that those triangles are similar and similar triangles have same angles and they are proportional. Now remember, the uh, the word similar means and, and proportional means that you can set up equivalent ratios. So this is a small shadow. This is a big shadow. This is a small height. This is a big height. And those are the only two numbers I care about right now, okay? These would be a small ramp and a big ramp is what I call it. Diagonal, small diagonal, big diagonal. But the, the point is the ratio of the small height to the small shadow is the same as the big height to the big shadow. I know three of these numbers. I can figure out the fourth. I want to see if you remember how to do that. Look at this. Replace all the numbers you can. And then remember how we solve proportions. Cross 
multiply. Okay, all right, I'm gonna press pause and you are gonna go see what you can do. Okay, hopefully you were able to get going on that. Uh, I will do the diamonds, I'll do the square roots and then I'll give you a hint to get you started on the uh, Ken Ken and we'll press pause again, see if you can finish. Okay, we'll give you a couple hints. Let's we'll solve it in stages. Okay, what two numbers have a product of 32 and a sum of 12? Hopefully you figured out that is eight and half of eight, right? Eight times four is 32, eight plus four is 12. How about 35 and 12? Okay, again, two numbers have a product of 35 or five and seven and a sum of 12. Okay, what is the square root of 256? What number times itself is 256? That's 16. Now, fractions. Now, most of you were scared of these the first time you saw them. But remember, it's kind of like doing two square roots in one. Because you're multiplying the same number times itself to get 9, and the same number times itself to get 64. What number times itself equals 9? 3. What number times itself equals 64? Hey, so the square root of 9 64 is 3 eighths. Okay, and again, go try it. You're not sure if that works? 3 eighths times 3 eighths, right? Right, that's 3 eighths squared or to the second power, right? And again, multiplying fractions is what? Easy. Multiply straight across the top, 3 times 3. Straight across the bottom, 8 times 8. Boom, you're done. Okay, so that's how you're doing those. So now you're thinking what number times itself is 25? And what is the square root of 81? Well, the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 81 is 9. So the square root of 25 over 81 is 5 ninths. Now, don't get fooled on this next one because a lot of people want to say the square root of 16 is 8. It's not. What is the square root of 16? 4, right? And what's the square root of 24? Uh, 49 7. So the square root of 16 49 is 4 7. How about x squared over 4? Well, what number times itself is x to the second power? x. What number times itself is 4? 2. Square root of 121 over 196? You kidding me, Mr. Daniel? Yeah, I expect some of you to figure that out. Remember, not every number has a square root. It has to be a special number. And there are only four numbers between 100 and 200 that have square roots. Well, five if you kind of count 100, right? Okay, it's uh, 121, right? That's 11 squared. 196 is 14 squared. So the only two in between that is 12 squared, which is a gross number, and 13 squared, which is 169, which is these two numbers flipped. That's how I remember it. All right, the square root of x to the fourth power is x to the second power, and the square root of y squared is y. How does that work? Well, x to the second power squared, that's x times x times x times x, which is x to what power? Fourth. Okay. That's how that works. Okay. Hopefully I stumped you on at least one of those. If you got them all right, I'm mad at you. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So where am I going to start on this? Uh, this can be three minus two or three minus two. It can be two minus one or two minus one. Uh, yeah. Or, or yeah, it could be two minus one or two minus one. Um, this could be a 2, a 2, and a 1, or it could be a 1, a 1, and a 3. I don't know. But I do know that this has to be a 3 times a 2, right? That's the only way to get 6 when I multiply if my only numbers can be 1, 2, and 3. I can't do 6 times 1, right? So 3 and a 2 or a 2 and a 3, I don't know which is which but I do know that neither of these is a one. If neither of these are a one and I have to have a one in this row, what do you know? This has to be a one. Now, if the answer is one and I'm subtracting and this is a one, I can't have a three there, right? So what does that have to be? 
and I have a one here and a two there, I don't have a three in this column, what has to go, okay? I'm gonna let you press pause and see if you can finish that. We Now that we got it rolling, right? I think you'll be able to figure this out. All right, next number we figured out is the dominoes fall. This has to be a three. Three minus what is one? This has to be a two. I got a three, I got a two. I don't have a one, this has to be a one. These two have to add to four. I already got a two. So it's going to be a three and a one, but I can't put a one here, right? What has to go there? I got a one, I got a three, what's missing? I got a two, I got a one, what's missing? Let's double check. Is one plus three plus one five? Yeah. Is three minus two one? Yeah. Is two minus one one? Yeah. And it's two minus three or two times three, six. Yep. Okay. All right. Hopefully you have fun with that. All right. What did Ms. Nords teach us when you divide fractions? Smell my feet. Keep that first number the same. Don't mess with it. And instead of dividing, I'm going to multiply. Why? Because multiplying fractions is easy. Okay. And that F or for flowers or feet. Nope. That uh, means I'm going to flip that second number. Okay, now if you want to say this like a, you're an 8th grade math student and not a 6th uh, grade math student laughing and giggling at smell my feet like I do, uh, then you, what you want to do is say uh, dividing by a fraction is like multiplying by its, remember that word? Reciprocal. Reciprocal. Okay, so straight across the top, 3 times 3 is 9. Straight across the bottom, seven times two is catorce. So you say 14 in, in Spanish. I like that word. All right, I'm adding these. I can't add sevenths and thirds. I need the same denominator. What am I going to do? I'm going to change these to 21s. Now, I did seven times three to get 21. I got to do a three times three to get nine. I did three times seven to get 21. When I go two times seven, I got 14. 9, 4, 9 21s plus 14 21s is 23 21s. Okay, now that's more than one hole. I'm going to use one, right? To make that one hole, I'm using 21 21s. How many are left? Two. One and two 21s. All right, easiest problem on the board. Four times two, five times nine. Boom, I'm done. Mic drop. I'm out of here. See you later. Okay, I'm back. All right, again, Miss Nortz told us to smell my feet. So I'm going to leave that first one the same. I'm going to multiply instead of, and instead of divide because multiplying fractions is easy. And instead of writing 2 over 9, I'm going to flip it, write 9 over 2. 4 times 9 is 36. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 goes into 36 three times. And I got six left over, but don't leave three and six tenths because you can simplify six tenths. Two goes into six three times, goes into ten five times. Okay, generic rectangle and C method. We did the C method. I'm going to cross cancel before I stop. start just to make this a little easier. Two goes into the bottom here and goes into 14 on the top there seven times and one time. Now I got a little bit smaller number, seven times seven and one times three. Now that's improper. Divide the bottom into the top. Three goes into four one time. One times three is three. Three goes in, bring down the next number <coughs> into 19, six times. Six times three is 18. My remainder goes on top. My divisor on the bottom. 16 and one third. <coughs> Let's double check that. Three, one half, four, two thirds. Okay, let's move this down a little bit and see a little bit better. Okay, three times four is easy. Four times one half is four halves, which is two whole. Three times two thirds is six thirds, which is two whole. So I got 12 and two and two, and then one half times 
two thirds is two six, which simplifies to one third. One third is only a fraction, two four six and one sixteen and one third. Same answer. Cool. All right, let's solve that problem. So this weekend, you can figure out how tall that tree is in your backyard. Get a six foot ladder out, do some math or an eight foot pole, do some math. Okay, so if the eight foot pole has a six foot shadow at the same time, this tree has a 24 foot shadow. Okay, then I can write my similar triangles. Terrible picture. I thought you were a good artist, Mr. Daniel. Someone else drew that tree for us, huh? All right, 24 there, six there. I know this is eight, and I don't know how big the tree is. Let's call that T. Okay. Now, the height of the pole is eight. The shadow of the pole is six. The height of the tree, we don't know. The shadow of the tree is 24. Now, some of you like to take the shortcut and say, wait, this is like an equivalent fraction. Six goes into 24 how many times? Four times. Right? So I got to go eight times four to get how big the tree is. The tree must be 32 feet tall. Let's, just for practice, right? Cross multiply, like we said, we, we would. Eight, uh, so I'm going to say T times six equals eight times 24. Now I'm going to show you how to do that in your head, real quick. If you like money, this is the same as eight times 25 minus one. Eight times 25 is eight quarters. You know, if you like money, that's easy. Eight times one is eight pennies. That's eight. Eight quarters is 200 minus eight, 192. Okay, now my goal, remember is to isolate the variable, get the T by itself. I have to get rid of a times six. How do you get rid of it times six? Well, you do the inverse operation or opposite. What's the opposite of times six? Divided by six. But remember, if I divide this side by six, my equation that was in perfect balance is no longer in balance. It's all kind of leaning that way now. How do I get it back in balance? All right? Do the same thing to the other side. I divide this side by six, I gotta divide that side by six. Now, the cool thing is times six divided by six, they cancel each other out, they're opposites. All that's left is T on this side, and this side is 192 divided by six. Let's go up here and do some long division and figure out what that is. Six won't fit into one, but it fits into 19. How many times? Well, about three, because three times six is 18. What do I do now? Subtract. What do I do now? Bring down the next number. And 6 goes into 12. How many times? 2. And that's a perfect fit. 32. 32. The tree's 32 feet. You can measure how tall a tree or the light post is in your street. And you just go out and measure the shadow. And then measure the shadow of something you know, like an eight-foot ladder or a pole, okay? See if you can do that. Make a flip grid of that. I'll give you some extra credit. All right. Have a great day, everybody.